we are doing bhagavad gita chapter 4 verse 31 Arjuna, yogis who enjoy the nectar that has been left over after the performance of a sacrifice, attain the eternal Brahma. To the man who does not offer sacrifices, even this world is not happy. How then can the other world be happy? Now, since we are learning spiritual, we should understand all this from the spiritual perspective. So when a sacrifice is offered to anything, so in the material world people go to temples and they perform all kinds of pujas and yagyas and yagas and all that. So when they offer it, something is offered over there, that is called a sacrifice. So in the material world this is a sacrifice. In the internal world, the sacrifice that is offered to the eyes are the object that are being seen. Like whatever object that we see is a sacrifice. Whatever we smell, that's a breath. That is also two kinds of sacrifice. What we eat, what we drink, that is a sacrifice. It's offered to the mouth and then it is offered to the stomach. So like that. What we hear, what we touch. So these are the senses which are offered. Alright, through the sense organs, then there are some things which are offered inside the body. What is offered inside the body? The energies. You know, I'm sure you know. There are different kinds of energies that are there. They are being offered. So, every part of the body is getting a kind of a sacrifice. What comes out of it when a sacrifice is performed is what we give is called an offering. What comes out of it is what he is talking about. Enjoy the nectar that has been left over after the performance of the sacrifice. So simple example. When I am burning wood. Say I am taking an oven. You know the makeshift ovens that we have. And I am burning wood in that. What comes out of it first is called the coal. I am sure you know about it. What comes out next, you will find that there is a lot of smoke that comes out. Fire burns. That fire is used for cooking food. You have seen that. So the fire which is set, it is burning those embers, the wood. That by itself can cook something. After the coal, you can remove the coal out. When you remove the coal out of that wood by putting some water on it, when you burn the wood, you can get coal. Half baked, half burnt, isn't it? And let us say I remove it out. So when I remove it out, the coal can also be used. So that which is coming from the sacrifice. Got it? Likewise, what I eat that is gone as a sacrifice. I am offering to the mouth, the God in my mouth. Right? So there are a couple of gods that are there inside the mouth. I am sure you know that. One is the Vak, basically the Saraswati. You can hear, touch, you know, sound and all that. It comes from the mouth. Yeah. Larynx and all that. There are salivary glands. There are teeth, there are all these kind of things inside our mouth. So these are the gods as we call them. Because they are doing something very, very constructive. A god is one who does something constructive. A demon is one who does something destructive. Some One performance is different than the other performance. So if I eat something... The salivary glands are working inside. Those glands are digesting the sugars. This you have learnt in school. Isn't it? The teeth is munching, churning, you know, making it into a pulp. Then it is going inside our gullet. So as the food enters. So there are different, different activities performed over there. 
so all these activities are connected to the gods hmm? so i hope you understood that what comes out of it when i put food in my mouth what comes out of it the taste isn't it so the moment i put something in my mouth at different different places in my tongue and my you know the lower palate and the upper palate what happens i get taste so that is something which is left over after the performance of this offering got it so i can taste the object what is the taste sweet sour whatever all right any kind of taste but you get the taste you get to enjoy the taste now when i say enjoy the taste doesn't mean the word do enjoy please do not misuse it enjoy doesn't mean feeling happy about it enjoy can also be miserable people love to enjoy <laughs> when i say these words when you love to enjoy means what you can be a miserable person also while enjoying i'm sure you know that there are miserable people who love to drink something or eat something which is very obnoxious it may be very horrible in taste but they enjoy it <laughs> it can cause them misery like eating tobacco <laughs> i am sure you know when somebody you know they chew the tobacco they do like this i've seen in the wild west movies in india it is very common people will keep tobacco just below the tongue like this they do like this and then they are <laughs> using the saliva to get a taste and it is burning their skin inside but yet they are enjoying it <laughs> so i say even a pig enjoys you should know that a pig is enjoying when he is rolling in the mud over there or the dirt same thing that is called enjoyment so sri krishna is saying this comes out enjoyment comes out and the yogis who do this the yogis who have offered something and they are getting something out of it that something helps them reach the eternal brahma means they can reach the ultimate destination of perfection in knowledge or the unmanifest that happens to the man who does not offer sacrifice even this world is not happy suppose offering sacrifice just now i gave you an example of eating okay when somebody is eating something but he is not munching he is not moving it in his mouth he is just gulping it down you know gulping it down there are people who drink liquor ha huh? i want you to think about it those who have visited wineries where you give where you get wine for tasting have you noticed what they do the wine tester takes a sip they run it in their entire mouth and then they spit it out so by doing that they are using their senses to give the credibility or whatever to the wine so if you drink wine and if you just gulp it down you are not offering to the gods over there so when you just gulp it down you are not offering anything to the gods inside our mouth but when you do it slowly and steadily you get the taste of it isn't that the truth likewise enjoying a meal when you eat the meal slowly slowly doesn't mean too slow otherwise people will say guru ji you said slowly i will take one hour to eat my meal sorry that is not what i meant i meant you have to give it sufficient time in your mouth to enjoy the taste some people have a sense of taste in the mouth some people have a sense of smell in their nose isn't it some people don't have any taste some people don't have any smell also those people have misused their gods that means if there is a god inside the nose 
who tells you what smell it is and if you don't have that sense of smell that person has misused that god somebody who doesn't eat the meal properly slowly and steadily enjoying every morsel of it and tasting it is doing a very big disservice so sri krishna says to the man who does not offer this sacrifice this even this world is not happy forget about that world that world is the divine world the heavens the heavens the gods in the heavens are not enjoying even that person is not enjoying who the one who is tasting the food the one who is eating the food got it did you understand now there are lots of things that happen in the material world all those things that happen have to be done in a very slow and a steady manner never do fast fast everything you know i want to do this i want to do this no 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 take your time do it slowly and steadily it has to be given to the gods the gods have to little bit enjoy i see in most of the household what they will do now they make ganesh you know ganesh is there ganpati bappa is there so they will make modak for him and they will keep it in front of ganesha like this and they say sukha karta dukha karta vartha vigna ji fast 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 and so that because the children and everybody want to enjoy that modak and they will immediately take it away the poor ganesha is not getting the sacrifice <laughs> that one should not do <laughs> let ganesh enjoy the modak no he is just enjoying the essence of it he is not eating it he is enjoying the essence of it likewise when you do puja please don't put a hair on the person and remove it out immediately okay that also should not be done have you seen in temples in india you know how they behave they don't even show now you take an offering to god naturally you have taken some peda you have taken some uh, agarbatti and you have taken flowers and stuff like that you know what these guys do they'll just take <laughs> take it away <laughs> take it away <laughs> take it away that is not called offering that should never be the offering offering has to be enjoyed by the divinity so it has to be done slowly not super fast where will you get to enjoy if everything is done super fast now imagine in in china and in japan there are trains okay they are going at 400 and 500 km zoom they go like this in india trains are going at 30 40 50 60 km per hour they go very slowly snail pace you get to enjoy the scenery around you get to fight with the people inside the train you get to see everybody is making a mess of the whole place it's called enjoyment <laughs> but if you are sitting in these uh, you know french tuv or the japanese all that big fancy trains and all or the planes you don't even get to enjoy you can't even see outside because by the time you are looking at something that thing has passed it has gone like that <laughs> so it has to be done slowly steadily that is what he means okay so you have to ensure that everything happens slow and steady so that the gods get the offering if you don't give the offering slow and steadily they are not happy with it neither will you be happy nor in this world nor in the other world so please be very careful hmm? so we will move to the next verse we are doing bhagavad gita chapter 4 verse 32 many such forms of sacrifice has been set forth in detail in the vedas know them all as involving the action of the mind senses and body thus knowing the truth about them you shall be free from the bondage of action through their performance this is a secret verse the reason why it is a verse which is very secretive or one which has got a lot of meaning in it is because sri krishna is now openly telling there are people who don't understand this kind of verses they will say that oh it is written in the vedas so yeah you got to do that no the vedas are saying see the words the vedas are saying everything that is mentioned in this vedic scriptures everything 
which is called an offering, a sacrifice, or this or that, everything. Remember in the Vedas it is mentioned that you offer to fire god, offer to wind god, offer to sea god. These are the things which are mentioned in the Vedas. What exactly does it mean? Sri Krishna says, everything is supposed to mean these three things. It is involving the action connected with mind, senses and the body. It has nothing to do with God's outside. No. So don't mix up thinking that, oh, it is written that you have to do this kind of a sacrifice and that sacrifice has to be done in a particular place. No. Sri Krishna is giving an openly over here. It is in your body. The wind sacrifice is in your body. The air sacrifice, okay? The fire sacrifice is in your body. Got it? So don't keep on thinking that, oh, I got to give sacrifice somewhere else. No way. Gods are inside of you. Gods are not outside of you. This is a verse which clearly tells you gods are inside of you. What makes you think that there are gods outside of you? So don't be under this impression that there are gods outside of you. So there is a Shiva. He is inside of you. What are you going to Kailash mountain over there? It belongs to China. Doesn't even belong to India. You try to, you can't even climb the mountain. You go over there, do some production and come back. And you feel very happy. I went to Kailasha. No way. Kailasha is in this. Can you see this white white over here? <laughs> it is somewhere inside there. So the Kailasha is inside if you have something up there. Okay. Please understand. You got to have at least a little bit of Kailasha inside of you. It is inside. It is the head portion. It's called the mountain. When in this say Meru, you know, this is Kailasha is up in the head. It is something which has got 1000 petals. Sahasrahar. Okay. Mount Meru is the pivot. Do you understand what a pivot is in our body? Where are the pivots? Can you see this pivot here? Have you noticed that your neck is on a pivot? It moves this way, this way. The pivot is there. There are pivots here. There are pivots at the end of your body also. You can move your legs this way, this way also. Isn't it? Move them up, down. Don't try to move them behind. <laughs> and don't try to move your neck behind. It will break. <laughs> the pivot only works this way. <laughs> Up and down and this way. Only 180 degrees, not more than 180 degrees. Otherwise tomorrow you will say, no, Guruji, you told to turn the pivot, the whole thing. No. <laughs> so, it is inside of you. The Meru Mount is inside of you. The Lord of this entire thing, as we call Maha, Maha you know, Mahavishnu, Right? He is in your heart. Heart doesn't mean heart. Otherwise you think the heart means okay, there is one organ inside there. No, 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 not the heart. The chakra, the, the, the location is somewhere there. It differs. Okay? So, there. There is uh, another God sitting just below that whom we call as Brahmaji. He is the producer, the, the, the person who keeps on producing stuff like that. So there, inside your body, don't keep on looking for all these gods somewhere outside. This verse tells you so. Most important, he says, the first word, action of the mind. So mind is what? Indradev. He is prone to a lot of mischief. Please understand, he does all the rights and the wrongs in the world. But because he is the king, god of the king, you know, he is the king of all the gods, he is let go. Like, uh, no punishment for him. So you can't punish your mind. Can you punish your mind? Go kneel down over there. 
hands on your head. You can't do that to your mind. Your mind is inside of you. Invisible fellow. Where he goes, nobody knows. And he always rides an elephant, you know. Elephant is Airavat. That elephant is very funny guy. He goes anywhere he feels like. He's like a, he's got a passport for any reason. So be very careful. He goes outside the body also, alright. So it's not inside the body the mind is, it's outside the body as well. Mind comes. Airavat comes charging at you. Like that, and he'll come with the and Indra is sitting on him. Indra is the mind god. He is, he is going to be very nasty fellow. You treat him nicely. You give him all offerings. You know, Indra Dev, I'm so happy. Blah 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 blah. I give you this puja. You be very happy. I I will get my benefits. But if your Indra Dev is angry or he's upset, he is upset, he is not got his food. You know, Indra Dev has not got his food. You know what? The fellow is going to be very nasty with you. Have you noticed that whenever you do not give food to your body, you yourself become a nasty human being? You don't want to talk to anybody nicely. You will always keep on doing all those actions. You don't want to talk to anybody nicely. This is a fool. So, this is inside you. Mind, body, senses, they are the gods. You got to offer them. So, many such form of sacrifice has been set forth in detail in the Vedas. It's written in the Vedas. Know them. Know them means you should know them to be involving the action of mind, senses and body. This, this is the secret. It has nothing to do with any God outside. So even if you give one kilo pedas or you know one kg of gold also to some God, the God is not even interested. There is no God there to be interested. God is inside of you. Okay. Ah. And don't keep on thinking I am going to give one kg peda to myself. The God of my mouth. One kg peda will give you loose motions. Okay. So don't do that. Otherwise tomorrow you will say, Guruji said give one kilo peda to this God inside of me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we come to this. Thus knowing the truth of them all, you shall be freed from the bondage of action. Once you know this truth, then what happens? You do not perform nonsensical actions in this world. The nonsensical actions of getting some idiot in your house and performing all kinds of sacrifices and all this kind of thing. You get, get the knowledge I don't want to do this nasty stuff. What is it? That is not what God has said. That is what not, not Krishna is not saying any of those things. Krishna is saying, just do this to the gods inside of you. Keep them happy. Good thoughts. Good words. Use your mouth for saying good words. Don't say bad words. You say four letter words and all those kind of things. The God inside, you know... God is not a God anymore. He has become into a devil, a demon. I told you, isn't it? All the good stuff con connects to God and all the bad stuff connects to the demon. The same God has turned into a demon inside. So the same mouth is going to spew out four letter words and all kind of nonsense that comes out. Even the mind. Have you noticed? Mind can, if you are in a very happy state of being, your mind is very happy. Uh, but if you are if somebody has ticked you off, you know, your mind is already, oh, how can he talk like this to me, blah, 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 blah. And then your mind is on a frenzy. Now you understood? The God has been offered something like a karela. Karela means a snake, um, what is that, bitter gold. Ah, the mind has been offered a bitter gold, so all bitter stuff only will come. So what is offered to the God comes out as a prasada. So what prasad will come if you have offered him karela? Karela means bitter god. Only bitterness will come out of it. There are people who don't eat sweet in their life. Have you noticed that there are some people who will never taste sweet in their life? No, 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 no. I don't like sweet stuff. If you don't eat sweet, how will you have a sweet tongue? You are a bitter person all your life. Some people will eat only khatta, khatta. Khatta means, uh, what do you call that? Um, Tamarind taste, what is it called? Forgot. Anyway, 
You see, all the everything from their mouth is like that only. Okay, so this this keeps on happening to them. That is why you should not eat that kind of stuff. Have a healthy meal where there is sweet, sufficient sweet. So your tongue is going to be sweet. Yeah, there some people will say, but I have diabetes. What am I to do? That's a different story. You are already messed up with that God in the beginning. That God has stopped producing all the insulin that is necessary. That is why you are having a problem. Why do you misuse? Why do you do this kind of a thing? In your life, you should have a healthy, balanced meal. And you go and mess it up by eating all nonsensical stuff. Then you are going to be out. Finished. That is what. Alright? So, if you know the truth, you will be free from this bondage through the performance of these actions. So, everything is inside of you. Whatever you offer to the gods, that they will give it back to you in the form of prasad. When you go to the temple, you offer peda to God, the peda only comes back to you, na? Or no? Or there is some other leaf over there that they will give you, no? If you give something, they give you same thing back, you know? You give one coconut, they will break the coconut and give half of it to you. Isn't that what happens? That's how it works. So we move to the next verse, we have a few minutes. So we are doing chapter 4, verse 33. Arjuna, sacrifice through knowledge is superior to sacrifice performed with material things. For all actions without exception culminate in knowledge, O son of Kunti. This is such a beautiful verse. You keep on offering stuff in the temples. Or you go to some place and you say, Oh, I am giving this, I am giving that. You are the biggest fool on earth. Sri Krishna is saying, if you offer material things, material things are of no use. You know, people have this habit when they come to meet me. Okay, they come with some offering. Everybody will get one, one kilo of uh, uh, apples. I mean, if I have 15 kilos of apple, if 15 people have come, what am I going to do with it? It's of no use to me. Like that in the same way, when you go to this temple, the temple gods are there, you know, different, different gods are there. They will say, oh, this god requires all lemons. So everybody offer lemons to this god. So that poor god is inundated with about a million lemons in front. I mean, just imagine, will you like to eat lemons all the time? How much lemon juice you will have? No, it's a stupidity, don't do that. Now, there is one Pedawala over there. Pedawala means a sweet shop over there. And he says, this is liked by this God. So give him that. And the poor God is inundated with million kilos of, you know, same sweet. He says, eh, I don't want this sweet. It become too much, you know, I'll get diabetes myself. So don't want. The God rejects all these things. So when you offer material stuff to the God, he is least bothered about it. He doesn't even take it. So why are you offering don't. He says, offer knowledge. You know, you have the 25 paisa brain is there, no? 25 cents brain. Make it 50 cents, make it 1 dollar worth. That is called accumulation of knowledge. People don't want to accumulate knowledge. When you offer knowledge to your brain, when you go and read books, I see people over here don't even, they will be scrolling in TikTok, Instagram, this, that. But they will not want to get knowledge anywhere. They don't even know whether there are elections happening in India or something is happening. They are not interested in knowledge. Sri Krishna says over here, when you offer knowledge to the brain, brain is a god, isn't it? The part of Saraswati also, part of Brahmaji also, remember, knowledge is there, isn't that? So when you offer it to them, they will give it back to you. The same thing. But if you offer them nonsense, like you know how many people are dancing in one show, what is that? Who cares? Is he think that God is interested in all the dance shows that you keep on watching? Okay. All those uh, uh, shows where, okay, this person has won one million dollars. He think that God is not even interested. You got to offer knowledge. Sri Krishna says, sacrifice through knowledge is superior to sacrifice performed with material things. 
You sitting here for satsang and listening even to a few words is called the sacrifice of knowledge. At least you have got a little knowledge in this satsang. The whole day of your life goes in listening to all the nonsense in the world, isn't it? You may go to office, you may go to work, you may go to kitchen, you may go and do whatever that you want to. What, what knowledge are you getting? Nothing. So this knowledge is going to increase your chances of going to the heavens. That's what he means. For all actions without exception culminate in knowledge. Every action that you do, end result is knowledge. What is the knowledge? If I offer 10 kilos of gold to God, what is the knowledge that I get? Income tax department is 100% coming and raiding me and asking me, where did you get the 10 kg gold? That is the culmination. Don't do stupid stuff. Knowledge doesn't mean that. The, finally, the knowledge are when you give this kind of nonsense to God, what is the knowledge? Well, jail, that is the knowledge. Your knowledge is now you are going to jail. Same thing, people go to gods and they say, God, God, please give me this. I am giving you so much, you know, so many malas, malas means garlands and food and stuff like that. When I am giving you all these things, please give me one very good bridegroom, okay? Or give me a nice bride. And the God says, Oh, this fellow is exchanging one kilo peda for one bride. I never know how this equation works, but he's asking for something wrong. Okay, what I will do is maybe he's got a bride written in his life. I will give him only one month of supply of, you know, sweetness to him. The rest of all his life, he will have bitterness. That is what you end up in. <laughs> what is the point in going and asking that God? Remember what he said. Sri Krishna says, don't offer material stuff. Knowledge is the best thing to offer. But everything culminates into knowledge. So what knowledge you got after you gave that thing? Nothing but grief. Got it? So please don't do these kind of things. Give the knowledge. Give everything within you. The gods are within you. Increase their knowledge. Give it knowledge. Read. Do something which is worthwhile. Public activity, like say for example, you do social service. Very good. Somewhere in life you will get it back. Because you may be in that position when you do the social service. So you will get it back. So we have come to the end of verse 33. So we will stop over here.